Well, thank you for joining us today for this edition of Momentum, brought to you by the Bagley College of Engineering. I'm your host, James Warnock, and joining me today is Dr. Bill Elmore. Uh, Dr. Elmore is the director of the Dave C. Swam School of Chemical Engineering here at Mississippi State. Thanks for joining us today, Bill. Thank you, James. Now, I, I know from talking to you that you don't necessarily come from a, a family of engineers necessarily. You come from a family of musicians. Um, so just tell me, how did you end up becoming a, a chemical engineer and get a, getting interested in this field and, and ending up here at Mississippi State? Well, I, I, told my, uh, I tell my students all the time and prospective students about uh, that sort of wandering that, that we can do in our early years of college. I, I started out, I, I tell students, I was actually a music major for about a week or two. I started school and... A whole week or two. Yeah, well, I had studied classical music uh, for 10 years uh, through my uh, elementary and high school years and had thought to pursue that and realized pretty quickly that I, I didn't feel like that was, if you want to call it a, a calling or, right. or something that was uh, that interesting to me. So quickly changed and uh, through some of my peers decided to, to go into uh, uh, the biological sciences which led to some research interest and ultimately to chemical engineering. Um, it's, it was a, a sort of a long path because I finished in the uh, early 80s and during that time period uh, oil and gas markets were down a little bit so a lot of us uh, rethought um, our career paths and actually chose graduate school. In fact, several of my peers here at Mississippi State uh, were all this, virtually the same age, graduated about the same time in sort of a down market. And uh, through that love for research, through some co-op experiences that I really emphasize to students, mm -hmm. that led me to, to stay in chemical engineering and pursue it all the way through to a PhD. I finished in 1990 and taught for 15 years at uh, Louisiana Tech. And then uh, through uh, some interesting circumstances, found out about a, a teaching chair, the Hunter Henry chair here at Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. uh, very excited about that, so I applied and, and came here in 2005 in the Hunter Henry chair. Have proceeded through that sort of for the last, uh, now I'm in my 12th year here, and absolutely love it. Maroon and white all the way. So. Great, I, that, that's always good to hear. Um, now, in the time that you've been here, we've seen some incredible growth in the School of Chemical absolutely, Engineering. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, student numbers have been going up. Um, the quality of the students is outstanding. Um, a lot of students in the Honors College as well, which is always a great thing. What is it that you say to these high school students when they come to visit campus to, to really attract them to chemical engineering and, and petroleum engineering yes, as well? Yes, well, yes, as we started our petroleum program uh, back in the fall of 2015, and so I'm excited about that. And so when I talk to prospective students, I actually, I first start with the, with the idea of engineering in general. I want them to think about, do, do, if you like to take your math and science interest and shape it into a job that gives you a lot of variety, that's, that's one of the primary selling points I try to make to students when I begin that conversation with prospective students. And I do try to meet with, e with each one that comes in the door. Um, and so to emphasize to them that the job itself can have all sorts of variety. That uh, if it's your preference with a bachelor's degree, you could indeed be in a, um, a full dress suit, downtown Houston, working deals and uh, with, with your company and with all sorts of uh, interactions. You could be in the hard hat and the uh, steel toed boots if you want to be out in the plant uh, managing and running things. I try to emphasize too that engineering leads to the opportunities to manage data and, and people to work with a lot of variety on the day to day job. That sells pretty well with students. They, they tend to think that, uh, you know, I like things. I like, I like a lot of variety of things. And so using math and science and their aptitude in those areas then sort of gets them in the door to our College of Engineering. And from that, then, I will start to shift towards the emphasis on the, the, the chemical uh, companies, uh, pulp and paper, and oil and gas industries, and talk about some of the uh, particulars of those things, which often it's those students who have enjoyed high school chemistry and I do try to draw that distinction between uh, what, what our chemists uh, study and do uh, for career paths and what the chemical engineers and petroleum engineers do. Again, just talking a little bit about the variety of day-to-day -day task. And that has, over the years, um, been a pretty attractive thing to, to most of the students that I talk to. You mentioned the, uh, the introduction of the petroleum engineering program um, back mm -hmm. in fall of 2015. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that that was a program we had here several years ago when we mm -hmm. brought it back um, to the layperson. 
How do you describe the difference between petroleum engineering and chemical engineering? Well, I, um, and, and actually having some of my own children that are engineers and out in industry, uh, I've been able to learn just through their experiences and through, of course, over the years. Uh, my own, in fact, my own career path almost started down the path of the drilling side, the, the upstream side, uh, finishing wells and that sort of thing. So chemical and petroleum engineers can go out there in oil and gas and work in what's called upstream, which is uh, effectively discovering, identifying uh, reservoirs, developing those reservoirs, bringing that oil to the refinery. So getting it into the pipeline, that's pr primarily what petroleum engineers do. Uh, there, are, there are emphases in petroleum engineering on what's called reservoir engineering, so again, scoping out what's underground, what's available, to the extent to which it's available, and how it might be recovered. Drilling, that's a special specialization within petroleum engineering, and, and then looking at uh, production. Again, right. our, and our emphasis in our program is on reservoir engineering. So we try to, uh, we've recruited faculty in those areas uh, for their research and for that emphasis in instruction at right. the bachelor's level. Once it's in the pipeline, then it's generally uh, shifted towards the emphasis of chemical engineers, that bringing it into the refinery and converting it to all the products that are sent, and that's called downstream. So that's the distinction that I try to help with students. Right. One really interesting uh, feature of our program here is that for the first two years, uh, the course sequence is virtually identical. So what that allows students to do is to, if they want to, I sell, I sell it to them like fishing, they, hey, you fish on both sides of the boat. If you yeah. want to stay a double major in petroleum and chemical engineering, which a number are choosing, you can follow that path and decide as you see the opportunities develop and your interests develop. And that's become very attractive to prospective students. I can, I can imagine so. Well, Bill, thanks for joining us today. We're going to take a, a quick break now and uh, we'll be back with our next guest after these messages. We all depend on accurate weather forecasts to plan our day. That's why Mississippi State University is teaching students to forecast the future using real world news sets as classrooms, putting scientific discoveries and meteorology to the test, while honing on-air reporting skills real time with local TV stations. And we do it so well that at any given moment, Three out of four weather forecasts across the nation are being delivered by MSU-trained meteorologists who are helping people make crucial decisions that impact their safety, working to ensure business continuity, and in many cases, saving lives. Predicting the future? That's what we're preparing for every single day so that you can prepare for your day. Well, welcome back. Joining me now is Miss Angie Verdell. She's the director for our diversity and student programs in the Bagley College of Engineering. So thank you for joining me here today. Thank you um, for having me. You're welcome. Uh, maybe you can just tell me a, a little bit about some of the, uh, the things that you're doing in the college with, uh, with our students. Sure. Um, so out of my office, the Office of Diversity Programs and Student Development uh, in the College of Engineering, Pretty much, we're trying to host programs that will address the needs of, uh, of the diverse students uh, that, we, that we have in the College of Engineering. Uh, one of the major programs that we have is the Summer Bridge Program, and it's geared toward incoming freshman students uh, coming into the university, making sure that they are closing any academic or social gaps that they may have, so that once the semester starts in the fall, they can hit the ground running and, and do really well. Um, during that program, students are, are taking math and chemistry, physics courses and some other um, type of seminars that really help them to grow professionally um, and personally so that they're ready to succeed in engineering. Yeah, and how, how long has that Summer Bridge program been, been going on? The program has been in existence for well over 20 years now. Wow, that, um, that's, that's quite some yeah, time. Yeah, it, it, it has some longevity. Um, you know, some of the initial funding came from the Lewis Stokes um, MAMP program and over the years we've received funding through corporations such as Chevron and, and Dow Chemical and the, the Southern Company and so we're really appreciative to you know all of the corporations who have stepped up to provide funding for this really great program. And you, you mentioned that the, the students get some preparation in, in math and, and chemistry and, and some of those other things. Could you tell us a, a little bit more about what specifically the students do, what, what you see their needs are, sure. how they can prepare, 
for college in, in general and some yeah. of the things that the, the Summer Bridge program helps to prepare them with? Well, the program is five weeks, okay? And it's an intensive five week program. This is not your laid back type of camp. Um, students are starting the program at, at 8 a.m. in the morning and we're done sometimes at 10 p.m. Um, over the course of that time, they're going to those classes. Um, the classes are about an hour and 50 minutes. They're working with university faculty members who are teaching those classes. Um, they do get a break for lunch. Okay. Um, we do allow them to eat lunch. <laughs> uh, but then we come right back in the afternoon and we're using um, presenters from other university uh, resource centers, whether it be the learning center, whether it's financial aid to help students to make sure that they have the funding that they need. Uh, we're just working in conjunction uh, with a lot of different entities on campus to make sure that our students are really informed. Yeah. And you, you mentioned it was a five week program. Yes. So they come here, they spend five weeks in the program. Yes. And then they start their freshman year. Yes. What, what sort of support is then offered to them once they get into the, the rigors of their, their first semester? So once the, the academic year starts, the students are required uh, to attend study hall. You know, we found out that students who uh, attend study hall and are really committed to doing that, their grades show some, um, some increase and some that's better than students who don't. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really important component to our program. Uh, in addition to that, you know, we encourage students to participate in student organizations uh, within engineering, whether it's professional societies or what have you, but really want to make sure that students have a network and just a sense of being and the tools to do really well in engineering. So for students that are interested in this program, where, where can they find out more information about so it? So they can find us on our, on our website uh, at bagley.msstate.edu slash summerbridge. And the application is there, everything is online, and we really encourage students to, to apply and to try to participate in the program. And is there any deadlines or is there a limited yes. number or, or yes we, like that? we we have a cap of 50 students because that's okay. what we can can really um we feel like we really can make an impact with 50 students um and the deadline to apply for the program is february the 15th for this year um so we encourage everybody to apply get your letters of recommendation in uh, and just come and be a part of what i think is a, a fantastic experience okay that, that sounds like a fantastic program. It is. Um, thank you for joining me here today. My pleasure. Um, it's been a, a real pleasure having you on, on the show. Um, and thank you at home for joining us as well. If you would like to know more about the Bagley College of Engineering, then you can follow all our updates using social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can follow us at MSU Engineering. Thank you. Mm -hmm.